Chris333 shared these images with us on the Bryce Talk forum at dice3d.com and what it done was created a little HDRI backdrop, spherical map, uh, using this software uh, to create this sort of nice space effect and I thought I wonder what else it could do even if we'd not got the software because I, I think it used HDR shop to assemble this HDR image but just using Bryce because we can export in HDR format to create an effect so well when you bring in images into the image based lighting tab here in the Skylab it'll accept it as angular map or spherical map but what I wanted to do was use the angular map form so I'm going to change the aspect ratio of the screen to 1 to 1 because that's the aspect ratio of angular maps get rid of the infinite plane and create a sphere and then using the overhead view so that's just press 2 I'm going to enlarge that sphere so it occupies more or less the entire square and that will be fine okay that's a little bit too much so I'll shrink it down the uh, the wireframe no longer adheres to the render size for the overhead view because the that overhead view is scaled with the wireframe to match a um, 4 to 3 aspect ratio image there you go so that's how things are set up I'll go sky and fog and turn the atmosphere off and set that to black so there we are and then I'm going to change the material for this sphere uh, in the material lab and I'm going to select from this drop down here pro materials and somewhere in here under PAL I've got one that I supplied this sort of fiery looking material so that's going to be our effect and to some extent that's driven by global ambience so if I increase that it'll provide the full light if it needs it so I'll just give that a quick render so that's going to be our effect but bear in mind that's going to fill the full 360 degrees of the background when it's turned into a light probe which is going to be interpreted a light probe but the the mapping won't be correct so these edges will probably be distorted I'm going to modify the material a bit so go back into the material lab and using this transformation tools I'm going to increase the frequency of the pattern so you can see taking the free frequency up it'll just add a bit more detail because you won't be able to see all of this image not unless we're using a very wide angled lens so this is going to be like a, a gas cloud effect now the next thing I need to do is try and work out what size angular map I can get away with well it won't as I say it won't be a true angular map but we're going to treat it as one and I reckon that Toharo said that it's probably something like uh, 3000 I think it's 3840 is about the biggest we can get away with in Bryce so if I give that a render now it's going to take a little while because it's so large but this material uh, renders fairly quickly so I'll just let this go through uh, the rendering process you see where we are now uh, 11 or 12 percent and it's going to have to go through an anti-aliasing pass so I'll just pause the video here and then I'll show you what we're going to do with it next right as you can see now it's nearly completed its anti-aliasing pass and I just wanted to take this opportunity to point out if you are preparing a render for export as a HDRI image it is important that the render is completed all in one go you can't save it and resume it as a, at a later date because the information that is gathered when you export as a HDRI image is only present in memory it is not saved with the file when you save the source file so at this point it's important to go um, file export image choose HDR format and we'll call that plasma cloud okay and that is going to be the light probe it takes a little while to export because of the size of the image and I'm going to launch another instance of Bryce now where I'm going to import that HDRI image once I've prepared my scene set things up a bit so what I'm thinking of is in terms of a simple space scene so I'm going to get rid of the infinite plane and I'm going to bring in from my library uh, one of these models I'll, I rather like this one it's a uh, deep space cruiser made by Philip Drawbridge and uh, that's available on DAS's site so that's going to be the subject of my scene so I've just brought that in from the object library I'm now lifting up so the camera is pointing up in the air and the reason for that is I'm still going to use 
haze effect because I'm going to use the haze to make some star glow illusion. So in sky and fog, I'm going to go into custom sky. I'm going to make the sky fully black, get rid of sun glow and horizon color. I'm going to hold the Alt key down and click on the clouds to get rid of the clouds. And I'm going to go into the sky lab and go celestial, custom field, stars, star intensity, very high, star amount, maximum. I'm going to increase the intensity of the sun, uh, rendering scene. And at this point, there should be some stars there, but we can't really see at the moment. So I'll just move out of that, and you can see the stars, little pinpoints of light in there. And you can also see a bit of a vague glow from the horizon. What I'm going to do, go back in the sky lab and go to atmosphere and modify the haze. I don't need fog. I'll turn that off, if, see if it's introducing anything. I don't know. What I want here is very high density and low thickness and that will create a bluish glow around the stars. You can modify the colour of that glow by changing the colour perspective or if you're happy with that colour then that's fine. So that's just in its default state but here in colour perspective you can have far more control. You can already see the effect is uh, exaggerated by turning this control on so I could make the effect more of a, a reddish colour or orange colour if I wanted just by adjusting this control here can see the colours are changing now, so a little bit more green will make that orangey coloured, which might be a more suitable match to the for the effect I'm aiming for. So now I've got orange glowing stars in the background. If I want the stars to look smaller, I can widen the field of view. The only drawback is I might start to get the horizon in, which is why I was tilting the camera up to start with to make sure that didn't happen. So I just rotate the camera around a bit more. I don't particularly want the sun visible in this, but I want the effect of the sun. So I can move the sun around to one side, make sure it's lighting, providing some highlights on this spaceship, but most of the spaceship is quite dark. And this is where the HDRI that I prepared first off uh, will come in. So back in the Skylab, image based lighting, use HDRI image, open, find out where I've saved it, load it in. It'll take a little while to load. You can already see that it's been uh, included in the background there. And then I want Add to Sky, so that'll add on top of the star so you can see it looks more intense already. I don't need a very high quality. I don't need any specularity from it because uh, it doesn't really produce that unless you work hard to produce that effect. I'm going to increase this to get a little bit of light from it so it's filling in some details. And then I can try rotating it and see what effects because it's going to be strangely distorted by the fact that it wasn't really prepared for for use as a, a background. So we're only treating it as, as an angular map so you might get some interesting distortion effects which uh, we can use to artistic effect in the background there. So uh, what I've lost you might notice is the sunlight and that's because it's been automatically disabled as a result of loading the HDRI. So I re-enable the sun and I can move that round to provide some highlight on the ship and also I could add in some sun glow colour provided I was very careful about the way I did so. So for example here sun glow colour because it's being added into the HDRI backdrop it doesn't need to be very intense before it'll make a big change on the appearance of the backdrop so you can see now that looks a lot brighter there and the other thing is the haze effect with the halo on the stars if I just need to switch haze back on just by clicking on that thumbnail there to bring that effect in all these things were turned off as a result of loading the HDRI image so just by utilizing this backdrop even though it really is not correctly mapped you can get different effects perhaps that uh, make it look like there's some sort of movement in the scene. The intensity control might be worth messing with at this point because obviously it is quite bright but turning that down does make it look a bit dull so maybe not. It's if you add the sun glow colour in then obviously it brightens it in different places and you get the effect of lighting on the, the model in different places. So that's just uh, a way of creating a sort of fairly abstract background perhaps to for a space scene uh, as I have here using uh, just just Bryce without having to resort to any other software in this case which is what I wanted to do so obviously you can as assemble your backdrops 
uh, using a mixture of HDR Shop and uh, and Bryce, and the tutorials are there with that Toro provided with the content that you get with uh, Bryce 7.1 Pro. So anyway, I, ho I hope that uh, has provided you with some ideas to experiment with this um, export feature of Bryce and uh, and do your own abstract space scenes.